I only had a couple of ideas that I think are, are <laughs> that I thought were fresh on Friday the 13th final chapter. I thought that we could make the kids more real. Where are we now? Lost. <laughs> we are lost. Pretty creepy, huh? Yeah. And I said, how about a kid, you know, Corey Feldman, who was, I guess, 13 or something, somewhere between 11 and 13 at the time. So they agreed to a kid. Then I thought, gee, a dog would be nice. All these terrible things they know that the studio should hate. Um, so we got a dog in there. Gordon! Hey, Gordon! Where have you been, huh, Gordon? And the last thing, I don't know how I even had the guts to say it. I said, what about twins? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Don't worry about it. Hi. Hi. Starting back at the beginning, I was always a fan, an avid fan of Halloween and Michael Myers was like a hero to me. So when they asked me to be in the Halloween movie, I was flabbergasted. Oh, this isn't, oh, this is, oh, oh sorry. Fr Friday, Friday the 13th is what I meant. Great movie. Uh, who's in that one again? Uh, the guy with the, the uh, baseball thing on. I was a big fan of the Halloween movies and they had actually called me and they said, you know, we'd like Corey to come in and audition for Friday the 13th. And I said, well, is that the one with the... And they said, no, it's the other one. You know, you have to watch. So I went and I watched part three, which I wanted to see anyway when it came out because it was in 3D. I didn't even know what the heck the Friday the 13th series was, but I knew that it was in 3D, and I was a, like, tremendous fan of 3D stuff as a kid. I still am. And uh, <clears throat> I was too young, obviously, to go to the theaters and see it. So by the time it hit cable, it was about when I was getting the call to come in and audition for uh, part four. Uh, so I watched part three and I loved it. I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. I'd love to be in this. I want to be the guy, you know. I'm like, but he's dead. I know they killed him at the end in the, you know, in the barn there. So how could he possibly be alive again? That's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. And then I, I got the script. Oh, okay, I get it. I read a lot of kids. I read a lot of people for that movie altogether. Brought a lot of people in. Hundreds of people came in to read for that film. And Corey also. I went in and I auditioned for Joseph Zito. And they loved the performance, but we got a call probably about a week or two later where they said, you know, we, we love Corey, we, we think he's great. Joseph Zito, the director, is a little bit concerned because Corey's a small guy. And he just doesn't look like he'd be able to even lift the machete that's the size that he's got to pick up to whack the heck out of this guy at the end of the movie. And I said, listen, I'm an actor. I will act like I'm big enough to pick up the machete. You just wait. Corey was fun on screen. Corey, as a kid, was a star. And you could look at him and your eye stays with him. You cared about him. I felt very lucky to be there. You know what I mean? It was. Um, and it's funny because you look back at your career and people say, you know, well, you were in Stand By Me, you know, Lost Boys, Dream a Little Dream, you know, all these kind of artsy movies, you know. And then Friday the 13th, okay, you know. But for me, it was, you know, I mean, it was a major kudo. I loved it. They couldn't contain him. His agents were trying to negotiate, but, you know, Corey kept saying, oh, I'll do this, I want to do this, I'll do whatever I have to do. So, you know, it, it sort of hurt their position. But uh, Corey was very, very enthusiastic and professional. I loved the whole experience. I mean, going up, we, we shot up at this lake, which was just, you know, creepy and fun. I mean, during the day, it was great, because, you know, we'd go out there you know, during the day on the lake. And I don't think I actually ever got to get in the water, but I always wanted to. And so that was good enough, just thinking about the water. I thought it was very, very important who was going to be Jason. I auditioned a number of people for it. And that also was a strange process, you know, auditioning people for, for that role. But we ultimately went uh, with a guy who had tremendous experience in Hollywood movies, mostly as a stuntman and as a double for many, many years. He was a big country Jerry Lee Lewis type dude, you know what I mean? It's like, hey man, how you doing? What's going on, you know? And, you know, that was kind of hard for me to relate with because I wasn't real the cowboy type. And I think, you know, out of all the 
Fridays I've seen, I think he did the best job. I mean, he was just so menacing and brooding and had that stance, you know, and the walk. And, you know, it's a, it's a, a fun character, I'm sure, to play. It's silent but deadly. Who is it, Polly? Polly. Hey, Paul, is that you? The Shadow Kill was like an important thing for me because I, I sort of wanted to go against the cliche of, you know, the girl in the shower and there's the beast and it's not the beast. I took the guy with the, the, the prettiest guy with the most, you know, chiseled face, with the most perfect face. And he's the one in the shower now. It's not the girl in the shower. And what does Jason do to this guy? Jason loves to use tools, right? He, he's, a, you know, he's some kind of talk for handyman, loves tools. Instead of tools, he just goes right through the glass, grabs the guy, and smashes him against the tile. You know, just smashes his face. It was sort of fun in a way. I mean, not, not that, you know, smashing someone's head in the shower should be fun, but it was more fun than, than just doing another cliched thing. I sat around thinking, you know, what have I, generally what, what is it that I haven't seen before? Or what would impress me if I was sitting in a movie theater? And I thought, if the woman who's at the heart of this movie jumps through a window and, and then runs off and still has to fight Jason after that and hit him, you know, hit his mask with a hammer, and that's a good thing to do if we could figure out how to do it. We also had, had a lot of license because it was my impression I mean, maybe we behaved, uh, uh, you know, less than uh, in a prudent way, but it was my impression that there was never going to be another Friday the 13th. I was told that this is the last one. They didn't want to make any more, and they were happy with the ones they made, but they didn't want to make any more, and this was it. Go kill Jason. We're, we're never going to see him again. The entire end sequence, after I shaved my head, I had a bald cap on. I didn't really shave my head, folks. Uh, that's one of the big misconceptions, everybody. Oh my God, you had to shave your head? Wasn't that hard being, you know, going back to school? And no, I didn't shave my head. Um, I wasn't that dedicated of an actor. I wanted him to really shave his head. And they were worried because the television pilot season was coming up and he wouldn't get any roles in television if he was bald. Didn't shave the head, had a bald cap on, and I was wearing it every day for probably like two weeks while we shot that entire end sequence. And because of it, I got very, very ill because your body temperature rises when you cut off the circulation in your brain or in your head area. So wearing the bald cap every day for, you know, 12 hours a day, I was getting sicker and sicker, and as I would get sick, my temperature was rising due to the bald cap. intense, I would say, part of, of the entire shoot was just prior to that, we're doing the scene where Rob gets thrown through the window. And the way they shot it was, it was one entire shot. And I'd never seen this done before on films because usually, you know, when you're dealing with a stunt or something spectacular in nature, you want to kind of get one, make sure you got it, and then you move on to the next piece. Well, this was like a two, three page scene. And they said, we're just gonna shoot straight through. So the part where she runs back in the house, Tommy, 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 and I'm on the stairs. Tommy! What's going on, what's going on? Hurry! She says, lock the door. And we're locking up the doors and bolting everything. All of that straight through to when I run upstairs and she runs back out of the house was all shot in one take. And then they went back in for coverage. What happens is uh, they give us the timing several times. Okay, so she's flying through the window, beat, 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 you back up, beat, 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 he comes through the window, beat, 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 picks you up, then she hits him with the hand, you know, I mean, everything was timed and staged and set. So, we start the scene, Joseph says action, He's running around, doing our bit, the guy comes through the window, beat, 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 I back up, beat, 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 no Jason. Okay, well, I 
maybe the stunt didn't look right, maybe they're, you know, they didn't throw him through the window properly, maybe a piece of makeup flew off, I don't know. They're probably gonna yell cut any Boom! And all of a sudden, Jason comes smashing through the window, like, you know, probably 10, 20 beats later than he was supposed to. Scared the shit out of me. This huge man comes through this window with such force and impact, picks me straight up into the air. I'm only, you know, two and a half feet at the time. So he, you know, picks me straight up seven feet in the air or whatever. I mean, I was just losing it. So all of that expression that you see on my face, I was not acting, folks. That was very genuine. Uh, it was horrific. <laughs> just a fun thing to be a part of that. And the fact that I got to kill the guy at the end, you know, I mean, I felt like a mini he hero of some sort. It was the mini me of my day, or the mini he of my day. Die! 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 When Jason is finally killed, Tommy is saying, die, die, and we go to white. And I was in this theater in New York. It was a thousand seat theater filled, every seat filled. And when the thing, I was standing in the back, when the thing went to white, you could see a thousand, the fans were all on, the, they were on their feet standing there with their hands in the air cheering. It was like a rock concert. It was the strange, in silhouette against the white screen. Standing in the back of that theater, you know, looking at this incredible silhouette of all of these people in the aisles, dancing in the aisles and with their hands in the air cheering Jason's death, you thought, the power of this thing. Absolutely unanticipated. Any, anyone who tells you that, you know, they calculated in order to get that, it, it, you know, it's, it's just totally unanticipated. But the force of it was extraordinary.